Hey hey, Marcus House with you here. Today I am launching the Falcon Heavy Landing, all the boosters, uh, all the stages of this thing, it's going to be huge. If you guys checked out the static fire that happened just the other day, uh, this just blew my mind. Just check out the massive power of this huge rocket. <laughs> now, that is just incredible. Sadly, Kerbal Space Program doesn't quite give the same effect there of that huge plume. This is about as much as we get, even at full thrust. So, yeah, it's not quite the same, but nevertheless, I'm going to have a good crack at trying to get this simulation as accurate as possible with uh, close to the stock game. Most of these parts are all stock. So for those of you that are not familiar with the Falcon Heavy and this awesome vehicle that's going to be launching in a week or so, this is a presentation put together by SpaceX uh, a few years back actually, and this shows the first stage here separating the two side boosters, decoupling there, spinning around, they now turn around, face in a retrograde direction. Uh, they fire to uh, basically reverse their direction and come back down to land at the landing pad. So you can see here from the simulation, uh, they just start firing backwards after they've turned around. And uh, yes, eventually coming down very accurately and land side by side on the two landing pads, almost simultaneously. Now this is a massive challenge in Kerbal Space Program because there is no way to do this in the stock game. And what I needed to do was install a special mod called Kerbal Operating System, which basically allows me to program the rockets to behave the way I want them to. And the very first step, of course, is coming up here where the two side boosters are going to detach. And then the program I've written is going to switch to this side booster and it's going to now force the second booster to copy the movements of the first. And using another fantastic mod called Trajectories, I'm able to determine where the booster is likely to land based on its current velocities and all of the atmospheric drag in the simulation. So what I've got the uh, second booster to do is copy the thrust from the first, and then we uh, have the program switch to the second booster and make another correction burn to make sure that it is also going to come down right over the top of the landing pad. So it was just a small correction there. So you can see there the other booster is just over at one and a half kilometers uh, ahead. Now that is only because there was a slight delay between the two corrections. They should actually both meet up. Now at this point, both of these uh, boosters are essentially in free fall. As soon as they start burning, they will start to try to correct themselves to make sure they're coming right down on target. It's a little hard with Kerbal Space Program to get this absolutely perfect, but you can see the boosters are falling quite close together now. And here we go, both boosters have fired their engines to slow their descent, they've got the grid fins out to try to steer themselves towards their target landing direction. There's basically no fuel left in these things, so there's only enough to just touch down before uh, basically falling out of the sky, so they're both coming down right on target, side by side. And there we go, touchdown on one booster and the other as well. There we go. So both of those there, and you can look, there is no fuel margin left. Absolutely no fuel left in these things. Uh, that was actually probably more luck than anything on my part to actually be able to get it quite that close. So there you go, the two boosters have landed. Now we, of course, switch to the next stage of that mission. Once those two boosters fall away, we've now got the next stage. Uh, we ditch the fairings very quickly after that. The fairings are there to protect that very sensitive payload. And this is where the mission starts to differ quite considerably from a normal Falcon 9 launch, if you follow those. So the, uh, the fact is that this central stage has still got quite a lot of fuel in it at this point. So the idea is that we can gain much more velocity with, uh, with quite a lot more mass. So essentially in a Falcon Heavy mission, the drone ship would need to be quite a bit further away because this, uh, this central core is going to gain more speed than a normal Falcon 9 launch. So we've decoupled that stage two there. That can continue on on its merry journey, leaving our booster to uh, coast along and uh, get ready to land on the drone ship. 
Now, because this booster is moving along at a much higher velocity than a regular Falcon 9 booster, it will actually need to slow itself down more than usual. That is because uh, the atmospheric drag and all of the re-entry heat will actually damage the engines uh, and also the grid fins and all sorts of other very sensitive parts on the vessel. So it needs to do quite a considerable burn to slow itself down enough to actually re-enter without damaging itself. So that small programmed burn there was just to make it overshoot our uh, drone ship. And you can see there, stage two has accelerated away and that's almost now in orbit. So while that's all going on, we can actually now watch this come down. As we get to around 40 kilometers from the surface, we're going to do a final retrograde burn to wipe off enough velocity so that we're not damaging the parts of this vessel too much. And it's also going to make sure that our vessel is coming down right on target over that drone ship. It's currently around 30 kilometers away from us, but it's going to descend now very rapidly. Again, those four grid fins have uh, deployed there to allow us to not only slow our descent more quickly through the atmosphere, but also to give us that extra control to make sure we're going to come in over the top of that ship. And again, as soon as we get to a certain velocity, currently moving towards the target at around 45 meters per second, it's uh, essentially going to make sure that we are coming in right on target. There we go. It is correcting all this by itself. And a touchdown there on the drone ship. Uh, just read the instructions in this case, which is also a mod for Kerbal Space Program, that part there. And there we go. We have all three of those boosters now perfectly landed. We're switching back in time again now to the final stage of the rocket, which is essentially now uh, waiting as the Falcon Heavy core is coming down to land on the drone ship. So this is uh, now checking out what would be occurring at the same time with this last stage. So I have now taken manual control and I'm just circularizing this uh, final stage of the booster to uh, get our main payload here up into a fully circularized orbit at around 95 kilometers or so. And there we go there, that's about correct there, just slightly adjusting that. Now in the real Falcon Heavy demo launch that's coming up in around a week's time, Elon is actually sending his first Tesla Roadster up to uh, get into an interesting orbit here close to Mars. Now we're not doing that today, we've seen a few other simulations attempting to send a car to Duna or something uh, fairly appropriate in Kerbal Space Program. Instead, what we're doing is we're actually going to take a crewed mission, kind of a little bit like an Apollo-style mission, uh, up to the moon, which is another possibility for what the Falcon Heavy may be used for in hopefully the near future. So we can see we've got our three Kerbals on board, and there is just loads and loads of uh, Delta V available in this rocket, uh, an extreme amount, more than what we could ever use in this little mission. But uh, it's just a demonstration really, so we're just getting our trajectory set up so we're going to pass very close to the moon. In real life, of course, you would never actually approach the moon in that way. That would be a very strange way to do it, but it was just uh, because I wanted to make the simulation for a polar launch just a little more tricky on myself. So we're just doing a retrograde burn here to drop ourselves down into a low orbit around the moon. And you'll see here our orbit is just slightly angled off. So I'm going to do a quick inclination change to make sure that we're coming around the moon um, in an equatorial orbit. Now, because the Falcon Heavy hasn't even had its first demo flight yet, it does seem a little far-fetched that the Falcon Heavy will be sending people to orbit around the moon in the short term. Although, that being said, Elon Musk did announce last February that the company plans to launch two paying customers on a week-long trip around the moon. Uh, before the end of 2018, I think it was at the time. I don't think that's probably the case right now. But it's interesting to see how fast this sort of thing can occur. So as you've just been watching, we've detached our little lander from the main mothership and are now coming down to land on the moon's surface. Not in an overly efficient way, I must say. I was trying to pick this nice flat looking landing spot before I flew over it. So I'm uh, coming down much more vertical than I normally would have. Uh, so just touching down there on the surface of the moon. And there we go, nice and gently. We have our three Kerbinauts here on the moon's surface so they can hop out and plant a flag. In real life, of course, this would be the first time that we have touched the surface of the moon with human hands in almost 50 years. 
That for me is quite depressing really, we should have gone much further by now and uh, there's nothing to me more inspiring than being able to watch this sort of thing occur in real life. So planting our little simulated flag there for our first moon landing and we'll hop back into our little lander can, all three of our little Kerbals. For those of you that have never played the Kerbal Space Program game before, it's now available on PlayStation 4, along with all of the regular platforms, PC, Mac, all that sort of thing. It really is such a wonderful game to play, especially if you're a uh, space enthusiast like I am, understanding orbital mechanics is awesome. So what we're doing here is waiting until our mothership is passing right over the top of us, and as it gets close, we are going to launch straight to, towards the 90 degree marker on the nav ball. Essentially what we want to do here is catch up with our mothership as fast as possible while uh, hopefully actually making it to orbit because we've got almost no fuel left in this thing. That's partly of course because I was uh, actually landing the uh, vessel on the surface of the moon in such a rubbish way so hopefully that is not going to bite me. So just four little tiny engines on the uh, on the outside of this vessel and uh, that leaves us with a huge big docking port underneath that we can then use to dock to our main mother ship. Now the most efficient way to launch a vessel, especially on a body like the moon here, which has got no atmosphere, is to thrust almost exactly horizontal, um, only allowing enough climb to keep yourself from descending. Now you'll see here our apoapsis is going to pass right up here, right where we're going to meet up with our mothership vessel here and I'm just adjusting this so we're going to encounter at around one and a half kilometers just at this point here. Now at this point in time I did not have a perfect circularization so it would mean that on the opposite side of the orbit I would be uh, smashing into the moon's surface. Now it was only at this point I realized just how little fuel that I had left in the tank here, basically nothing. Just enough to uh, reduce our relative velocity to the target here. You can see it coming down there on the nav ball and there we go. And now, and you can see there, liquid fuel, only three, uh, only a little over three units of liquid fuel left. Um, this was not staged. Nobody will believe me when I say that. It was not staged that I ended up with just this amount of fuel. So after just a little puff towards the target, that means we're going to close that uh, distance less than one kilometer to go now. And we only have just over one unit of uh, liquid fuel left here. So probably just enough to... Uh, wipe off this relative velocity as I get close. So this is coming in there now. 6.4 meters per second to take off. Three, two, one, and out of fuel. <laughs> and yeah, uh, that was just the luckiest thing ever. Of course, there was plenty of fuel left in this mothership, so I could have always used the mothership to dock with the lander. Wouldn't have been a problem. I also had monopropellant left in this lander as well, so quite a few meters per second left in that there. So. Just coming up here to just gently now dock with the mothership now that we've done our intercept there. And there we go, docked. So now that our mission is complete, it's time to head back to our home planet. And of course, the best way to do this is to make sure that we're in a position in the moon's orbit so that when we burn prograde, we're going to be ejected from the moon in a retrograde direction relative to the moon. So that means we're going to be falling back in towards the home planet there. So just completing that burn there, you can see our trajectory is going to bring us right down near the atmosphere of the home planet. And as we leave the moon's sphere of influence, there's just a few other things that we need to consider. First of all, we would like to keep our little mothership booster up here for future use. It's still largely full of liquid fuel and it has loads of Delta V available to it. So uh, we've decoupled that. We're going to just move this out of the way to make sure we don't hit our other ship. A slight radial outburn here will make sure that we don't um, come back into the atmosphere with that booster. And as we switch back to our lander, we just need to then uh, basically do a radial inburn just to make sure that we drop down into the atmosphere enough to make sure that we're going to land. So there we go there. We can now time warp down here and get ready to uh, do our re-entry. So we'll just decouple this stage and I've left this a little bit late. I need to bring in the solar panels really quickly. Oh, there we go, just made it. Probably should have decoupled all that stuff a little earlier before it came back and smashed the vessel. And now we can just leave our heat shield to wipe off all our velocity. So the demo Falcon Heavy launch is just going to be awesome to see. It's going to be the most powerful operational rocket in the world by a factor of two. I do have an interesting little blooper reel coming up here showing a lot of my failed attempts at landing the uh, different stages of the Falcon Heavy. 
and the three life forms on board this little capsule can reflect on how lucky they were to not be in one of those failures as they watch the beautiful sunrise come up here over the Kerbin Ocean. So as I said earlier, I used the Kerbal Operating System programming language to program the rocket, and this one in particular had all of its stages all backwards, so yeah, that was a fun one. The Kerbals on board uh, weren't happy about that one, but they did survive, interestingly. Now there was a real trick to landing the actual booster on the drone ship because the booster is moving at such a large velocity that you really do have to get your trajectories mod to really accurately predict where you're going to go. And you can see I ran out of fuel <laughs> a lot of times actually. That was, only, that was probably the uh, worst attempt. Uh, you can see from this other one I had an explosion. The actual second stage had burst the batteries. Uh, leaving this thing to just spin itself uncontrolled until it's smashed quite spectacularly in, into the ocean there like that. Of course, uh, programming the real Falcon Heavy and Falcon 9 would be much more difficult. <laughs> this is just child's play compared to what they're doing over there at SpaceX. So yes, this next one, my booster just ran out of fuel, just, <laughs> just above the surface, topples over. Uh, that was heartbreaking because it had taken probably about 30 attempts to get that one right. And uh, yes, yeah, some more examples of just running out of fuel just within the last kilometre of the drone ship, which is uh, equally as frustrating. This one actually was getting pretty close. I was pretty optimistic, but not quite enough fuel, and I was just a little far off course. <laughs> so yeah, uh, the pains I go through for you guys, I tell you. So I hope you guys are just as stoked about the upcoming Falcon Heavy launch as I am. Like, it, this is just amazing, this vessel, right? This can lift 54 metric tons to orbit. I mean, that is just colossal. And as I say, over two times more powerful than any other currently used rocket. If you enjoyed this video, please do subscribe. There's going to be much more SpaceX related news coming. And uh, yes, we will be watching closely. Best of luck SpaceX in the upcoming launch. In the tile here in the bottom left, we have a simulation of the Falcon 9. Kind of doing similar kind of stuff, landing on a drone ship and that sort of thing. In the top right, my latest video. And in the bottom right, a video that YouTube has selected just for you by some excited little robot. Thanks for watching and we'll see you all in the next video.